man, you see what's going on in Israel and Syria? Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. There's just so many things going on. So I'm going to give you a whole bunch of articles, actually, what they read from their headlines. It's crazy. I'm praying that this will be it, hopefully. Amen. And people will be disappointed tomorrow if the rapture doesn't happen, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, folks, I keep stressing... Um, don't believe in this kind of rapture date setting stuff. You've got to be careful. You're going to lose peace, your joy in God. So just trust God. Just trust God that He's coming any moment. Hey, if He comes tomorrow, I'm happy. I'm excited. Amen. All right, Isaiah chapter 17. And then we're also going to look at Amos chapter 1. What was I doing? All right. Amos chapter 1. Now, in these two passages, it talks about two locations where the Lord talks about. But the big one, which we're all looking at, is Syria. So as we all pay attention to Syria, we see so many things going on. I mean, it's crazy. I'm going to read, read you the headlines of these articles. These are all from the uh, Israeli news source. So this is all from Israel, okay? It's called the Times of Israel. May 13th, headline title, Top Minister, uh, no, let's go all the way back. Let's go backwards. So let's start off with uh, three days ago, all right? Foreign minister in Damascus says retaliatory attacks on our Iranian targets mark a new phase in the war on Syria. A new phase in the war on Syria, he actually says word for word. Foreign minister in Damascus. Here's another headline title. An A to Russian President Vladimir Putin said Friday that Moscow has no current plans to supply an advanced air defense system to Syria. Syria says Israeli strikes killed three damaged air defense units. So this was two days ago. Uh, today's date is May 14th, just to let you all know. Here's an article. What? May 13th? Uh, May 13th. Excuse me, why am I saying yeah. May 13th? Why, why did I say 14th? Wow. 14th tomorrow, that's right, the rapture day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So May 13th. <clears throat> uh, here's another article. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman said Thursday morning that the IDF had destroyed, quote unquote, nearly all of Iran's military infrastructure sites in Syria. Moscow says it won't supply advanced air defenses to Syria. Here's another one from two days ago. The Britain based Syrian Ob Observatory for Human Rights said at least 23 fighters were killed in the Israeli strikes, including 18 foreigners. Liberman said, Israel destroyed nearly all Iranian military sites in Syria. There's another one, uh, three days ago. Israeli strikes on several areas of Syria overnight killed at, uh, killed at least 23 fighters, including five Syrian regime troops and 18 other allied forces. Overnight clashes show Shiite monster in Syria is limited for now. Uh, another article from three days ago, Syria State News Agency, after initially reporting that the country's air defenses were intercepting dozens of hostile Israeli missiles, and Israeli strikes in Syria said to kill at least 23, 18 of them foreigners. Another one from three days ago, IDF warns Syrian military not to interfere as it launches massive airstrikes in largest direct exchange with the Islamic Republic. In addition to Iranian targets, Israeli strike pummels Syrian air defenses. Here's another article from one day ago. You see this? This is really getting crazy here. So I've heard actually, I've also heard from one news source it's a legit news source that they didn't get anything like this ever since the Yom Kippur War. Mm -hmm. So this is like really a lot of things going on. Another one says, <coughs> uh, this is one day ago, Liberman also told the Israelis that they should not let the threat from Syria deter them from visiting the north. Quote, unquote, you can come. You can return to the bed. Eleven Iranians among dead in Israel's strikes in Syria, monitor says. And here's another one from one day ago. 
the top minister said, uh, quote, top minister Israel should eradicate any trace of Iranian entrenchment in Syria one day ago. I wonder what's going on right now. So you see right here that tensions are getting higher and higher with the conflict with Syria and Israel. And if you know your Bible, I showed you this in other videos, I will come back to these verses, but this has to happen. This conflict has to happen in order for the rapture and the tribulation to occur. That is extremely important. So we believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. Bloop, oop, I messed up right over here. And then what, over, what happens here is that this is a church age. <clears throat> here we have the tribulation. And then we also have here the millennium, 1,000 years. Now the rapture happens at this point. <clears throat> and when the rapture happens... <clears throat> In order for this to occur, if this goes on right here, seven years, tribulation, then you got to understand this. It has to be one man from these two regions. He's a Syrian Jew, the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27, I believe, is the Antichrist making a covenant with Israel, which goes about seven years long. So there we see the timeline of the tribulation. So this can't occur, this covenant can't occur until we get some Syrian Jew come out. And he makes a covenant with who? Israel. And he's a Syrian, remember. He's a Syrian. So this tension has to happen because after war, what comes after war? Then it comes into unity, terms are met, a peace, and then a covenant made. Maybe... Think about this. Maybe that covenant the Antichrist makes with Israel is after something really big happens, which may be worse than what's going on now. Possibly, Syria and Israel get so bad, so many casualties, so much bloodshed, and people want peace, right? That's what happens after war. If you've studied, uh, a lot of you conspiracy buffs know this, is that elites always use wars as a thing where, because wars, it does dramatic changes to society. Even liberal universities that I attended, they even said that, that the times, the economic time changed and was helpful after wars. After wars. So the thing is, is, is that after war, then you can get all that impurity cleaned off, as those new agers say, and we can bring in that new kingdom. So perhaps something really bad, and finally these people want peace, they're tired of war, they're tired of bloodshed, and here comes this Syrian Jew. He's Syrian, how do we know? He's Jewish, how do we know? Daniel chapter 11, as you've seen. <clears throat> but let's look at these two verses on this conflict. It seems as if, it seems as if the Jews will be the ones who supposedly win and gain peace. That's my prediction. Now you might say, why is that, Pastor? Because the reason why is because the Antichrist, he wants to take over where? The Temple Mount. The sacrifices will resume. See that? So Israel would get the dominant play. That's what I'm predicting. It could be true the Syrians could win, but I do know this in the tribulation, it's the Jews. The Jews will get their terms, their peace. And this conflict has been never ending, it seems like, ever since Isaiah 17. Let's start off right here. Isaiah chapter 17. <clears throat> We'll start verse 1. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a what? ruinous heap, so there is destruction. Now, there are these end times people who keep using Isaiah 17 with this Syrian war news. Now, the problem is because a lot of them do, are not King James only Bible-believing dispensationalists. They're not rightly dividing. This is not talking about the current war going on in Syria and Israel. Because what if, what if it doesn't turn out to be like what they think it is? Because Isaiah 17 shows you this huge destruction. What if Syria and Israel doesn't end up like that, see? For all we know. But this verse is applying to the tribulation, you understand. This passage, Isaiah 17, is applicable to the second advent, when God comes down and then conquers Syria and then reclaims Israel. This has nothing to do with today's time period. 
How do we know that, Pastor? Well, the reason why we know that is because in verse 4, and it, in that day, see a particular day, and if you read about Day of the Lord throughout the entire major prophets' prophecies, you know what they mean about that day, the day, or the Day of the Lord. Keep reading. In that day shall come to pass, that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean, and it shall be as when the harvestman gathereth the corn and reapeth the ears with his harm, and it shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley of Rephaim. And what's going to happen is in verse 7, At that day shall a man look, to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the who? Holy One of Israel. See, God's taking over. See, God's taking over the world. That's like after the tribulation. See that? When God comes down. Rapture, we go up. But we come back down in the millennium to rule over the world. And God rules on the earth. And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bough, and an uh, uppermost branch which they left, because of the children of Israel. And there shall be desolation, because Syria gets its payday. In verse 11, In the day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas. And to the rushing of who? Nation. See, this is something really big that's happening in the future that Syria gets involved in. That make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased at the chaff of the mountain. See, God conquers them. God makes those nations flee, so nations as well as Syria. Why, that's pretty obvious. That's Armageddon, see, right after the tribulation, right before the millennium. He conquers the world. He comes down and all people look at the Holy One of Israel. But this is really interesting. And behold, at eventide trouble, and before the morning, what? He is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Do you know what that eventide and morning is? Did you know? If you look at 1 Thessalonians 5, we are not of the night, but of the day. Who is the day star in 2 Peter chapter 1? Jesus Christ. And that day star is connected when he comes down, second advent. See, this is talking about definitely, uh, Malachi 4 is the most convincing proof. It talks about him coming down, conquering the enemies, but it describes him as the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. So there's no doubt, Isaiah 17 is referring to this time period. It's not all the way somewhere here. Right now what's going on. So we do know this is going to happen in the future. But here's the thing. Look at Amos 1. Amos chapter 1. But there is something significant you got to understand. Rather than wrongly dividing the word and putting out a wrong time period, what you can find out from the verses is this. Is This is very interesting still. You might say, why? Why still use Isaiah 17 and Amos chapter 1? Because the reason why is this. There, why did God specifically, because he did mention nations, but why did he put like Syria as a special place? Because there is something particular about Syria that has a beef with Israel. See that? How did they have that unless they had it a long time ago? See? A long time ago, earlier, before this. See, so it shows right here, not only that, you, this is interesting. If you study, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if you study the Bible about Syria, it always had a beef with Israel. A never-ending conflict. So this carries on all the, throughout here too, you see that? It carries on throughout here. So it still shows that there is tensions rising high between them. But not only that, because the Antichrist sets up a covenant, something big is going to happen between them. But not only that, because Syria is uh, hurting Israel. You might say they are hurting Israel. Yeah, that's why God's paying them back. Keep your hand at Amos 1 and go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Yeah, you all know where that page is, okay? So I don't need to tell you, all right? Go to Matthew chapter 24. Uh, what? Our good friends missed their favorite chapter. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Now we're going to see right here the famous chapter concerning the tribulation. 
And in this chapter about the tribulation, we see that the Jews, what happened? I thought they had peace. But boom, their payback. Matthew chapter 24. And we will read verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who so readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, where? Flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. So you'll notice uh, verse 22 is especially significant, showing that because of Israel, what they're suffering, the Lord's going to come back sh sooner. Verse 22, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See that? Because of the Jews as the elect. I mean, I don't have to explain it, right? You saw verse 15 through 21, so you know who that elect is. Any, any blind fool would have seen that. So you'll see right here that the elect is obviously referring to Israel because of that suffering and that tribulation they're going through. So in verse 22, that's why the Bible says he's going to make the time shorter for them. That's why it makes sense this will be like seven years long or whatever short time span you want to give it. But the point is, is the point is, is that, see, Israel is suffering tremendous persecution. Why? Not only that, why did Isaiah 17, God is paying back Syria? See, because something happened beforehand where there's this, such a high tension between these two nations. And there's this bitterness and anger and antagonism and even hatred that can be weirdly demonic sometimes. And all you have to do is read the news. Oh, excuse me, not the news, because they keep hiding all these bombings and these things that's going on. Well, all you have to do is just take a visit to Israel, and you'll see this hatred, this antagonism, where Syria, and not only Syria, but we're going to look at Amos 1, right? At Gaza, the action lies. And God's going to pay back these two particular locations, he says. And he's going to pay them back right here at Armageddon. Why? Because they did something against Israel. Why is it that sometime in the midst of the tribulation, Jews are fleeing? Matthew 24, right? We saw that. Because of persecution. Because Damascus and Syria, see, they're paying them back. They're forced to this covenant, and the Antichrist pretends because he's a liar. Judas, is, Judas is scary. What did he do? Betray. Judas is scared. It's going to come back from the dead. Betray. And through this Syrian pretending that, oh, that we will make peace with you. All right, Jews, you can have that temple mount. That's yours. And I'm a Jew too like you. So let's do this. I'm with you people. See? I mean, that's why they are Jewish elites. That's why you see Jewish elites, Rothschilds, Hollywood, some of this stuff. There are some people who what? That the devil will use at the tribulation. But those kind of elites and people, what are they going to do? Betray their own nation, Israel, in the midst. And then here comes haste. Syria. Hey, Gaza. Your chance to pay back. And then the Jews have to run away. Because God knows what's going to happen. They're going to hunt down every Jew during this time period. Imprison them. Bomb them. Chop off their heads. Oh, that's racist, Pastor. No, because the tribulation saints are what? They lose their heads at the tribulation. See that? So this Antichrist can, I mean, there's no doubt that the Antichrist will use the Muslim nations to persecute the Jewish people so that the Jews can run away. And then God's going to what? He saw the blood of his saints, and he's going to pay them back, see, at Armageddon. So look at Amos chapter 1 now. So your hand's already there, so I'll go ahead and read it. Notice at verse 3, uh, verse 2. What's the context, folks? What's the context here? Verse 2. And he said, The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn and the top of Carmel shall wither. See that? That second advent. Lord's coming down out of Zion and paying back uh, Israel against their enemies. Look at these locations. Thus saith the Lord for three transgression of who? 
Damascus. And for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. So you'll see that some of it has been already fulfilled at verse 4 and 5. You already see some of that fulfilled. But it's not all completely fulfilled. Why? Because of verse 2. Because he, God, when he comes down at the day of the Lord, he has to continue. Everyone who studies the Bible about the day of the Lord, God paying back Israel, will know that uh, half of it or part of it was fulfilled at B.C. So the rest of it will be fulfilled at the second advent. But we see Syria, see, Damascus, God pays him back at Armageddon. But then he's going to do Gaza as well. Let's look at verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captives of the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and him that... Hold the scepter from Ashkelon, and I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. Oh, build up the wall in Gaza. Pay back against the Jews. You can reclaim it. Get back that Temple Mount. Because why? He's a Syrian, the Antichrist. But here's the thing, is that, trust me, man, what's going to happen is that the Lord remembers that, and he's going to pay them in full at Armageddon. So we see right here, the point of this verse is that if this occurred ever since the B.C.s, this antagonism, you've got to realize it's, it's continuing on. And then the worst happens at the tribulation. So this kind of stuff, it's already been predicted and shown from the Bible, if you read your Bible, that this is obvious, this kind of conflict. But guess what? It's going to get at its worst at the tribulation. You've seen nothing yet. And even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.